Welcome back to Studio 33 Art by Kay. I would just like to do a reverse flower dip again today. Today I'm going to do a beautiful pink shade to make a lovely rose, hopefully. I'm doing this on a ceramic tile, which is 20 centimeters square. So that's eight inches by eight inches. Um, and what I want to do is similar to what I did the other day, um, have a bit of a mixture of different brands of paints to see if I can get some beautiful lacing. So I'm going to use um, mainly the global brand today and I'm going to have some opaques, some metallics, uh, as I say, a bit of a mixture of everything. Um, I'm also going to use some of the Pouring Masters paints. So I'll just quickly show you the colors I am going to use today. So for my base, I'm going to use an opaque, which is the Global Fuchsia. That was mixed with Australian Flow Troll. And then my colours are going to be the Global Magenta, which is a, a deep, deeper pink. Um, it's a transparent, but it's uh, quite a solid colour. And then I'm going to use the metallic Global Metallic Fuchsia. And as well, I'm going to use the Pouring Master Strawberry Red Metallic Pearl. So hopefully that might help to give some cells. And I just wanted to put in a little bit of white. So instead of playing white, I'm going to use the Red Interference Pearl. So once that dries, that will have that beautiful um, interference look where, you know, when you turn it into the light, it'll pick up on like a red tone to it um, when it's reflecting in the light. So hopefully that, that will be the case. Um, so I'm going to have quite a few here today, aren't I? And I'm going to add in a little bit of the Amsterdam Deep Gold because um, I want to put a, a some sort of um, metallic like gold, rose gold, silver, bronze, copper, whatever. So I've decided to use the Deep Gold today. Now I'm also going to just put a little bit of the Amsterdam Oxide Black um, Cell Activator I'm not really using it as a cell activator per se. I'm not swiping with it, um, but I'm just going to put some little bits, blobs on there. Um, and when I lift the um, paper towel, or actually it's a serviette or paper napkin, um, hopefully the little blobs of the oxide black will create some cells as well. So we will see. So without further ado, I am going to lay down my base, which is the Global Fuchsia, and I'll be straight back. Okay, so I've laid down my paint, I've made sure that I've covered my edges and that just gives the, um, the paint, when I spin it out a little bit later, it'll give it something nice to grab hold of and give me nice edges. So I'm just going to burst some bubbles now. And as usual, when I'm um, putting my paint down, laying my paint down, I like to tilt it and then spin it a little bit just to try and make it nice and smooth. And that's pretty good there today. Um, and when I'm doing this technique, the reverse flower dip, I try to make sure that my base isn't too deep because uh, if, it, if it is, the paints will tend to sink down into it and disappear. I want them to sort of sit on top. So I don't think I've, I'm too deep. I think it should be okay. I'll just give it a little spin though. Okay, so not a lot's running off, so I'm assuming that, that will be um, fine. And now I'll just lay down my paints. So to start with, I'm going to um, use the Global Magenta, so it's a darker colour. No particular reason, I'm just going to put them down how I feel at the time. And I'm going to start basically in the middle. And I'm just going to do a spiral, 
hopefully wide enough that I can get the other colours in as well. So it doesn't really matter too much what order you put them in. And that's something you need to just experiment with because, you know, you can lay the paints down one order one time and a different order another and you might get a very different result. Okay, so that was the Global Magenta. Next, I'm going to use a metallic, which is the Global Metallic Fuchsia. Just running those paints alongside each other. The very edges probably will get um, lifted off anyway when I'm lifting the serviette. And next I'm going to lay down the Pouring Masters Strawberry Red Metallic Pearl. Oops. Now I think this will help to um, create some cells because the Pouring Masters, which is poured straight from the bottle, doesn't have any flow troll added to it. It often does create cells. And it is a brand that I do import from the US, so I know it is available over there if you are in the States. I'm wondering where to get it from. And I get that off Amazon. And next, I'm putting down the Red Interference Pearl by um, Pouring Masters again. It's another ready to pour. And I'm basically just finding a gap wherever there's a gap in there now. So it's going over the top of some of the other colours. I do love the interference colours. And now the Amsterdam Deep Gold. And it's just going over the top of all the other paints. It's running it through. And last but not least, just a tiny bit of the Amsterdam Oxide Black. Just a few little smatherings here and there. Just to pick up a few cells, add a little bit of contrast colour as well. Maybe a little bit in the middle there. And that'll probably be about enough actually. Okay. So I just burst some bubbles. And now this is when the magic either happens or doesn't. So I'm just taking my serviette spraying it with some plain water and wetting that down just allows the paper towel or serviette or napkin to lie flat against the paint. So that it will make contact everywhere. I'm loving the way that looks just like that. So hopefully this is going to be magic. Here we go. So I'm looking for a pretty much as close as I can to the center 
not 100% sure where that will be. Uh, maybe if I go in like this. And take it over. Hopefully it will lie down without too many bubbles under there. I can see a few bubbles got under there. Just very gently patting it down. I don't want to squish the paint out. But I do want my serviette to be making contact everywhere. Got a lot of paint on there. Okay. I think we're pretty well making contact everywhere. So this is when we get either a wow or a oh. Okay. So we'll see. Here we go, guys. Hoping for a wow. I love watching Fiona do this because she picks those corners up so neatly. And I just haven't quite got that down pat. I think it's going to be a wow, guys. I'm going to try and come straight up without skew whiffing it. And off. Oh, yes. Now, what a shame I haven't got something ready to squish that down onto because that would have been beautiful. Well, I love it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's the um, Pouring Masters ready to pour. You can see that white. That was this guy here, Red Interference Pearl. Straight out of the bottle. And I love the black, little bits of black from the um, oxide black cell activator. Just bring that little bit of contrast in there as well. But this is very pretty. It really is. And this is a really good size for you to practice on too, the 20 centimeters or eight inches square. And they make beautiful trivets for um, in someone's kitchen, you know, for them to, um, you know, put the teapot on or even make lovely stands for a pot plant. Although, you know, you don't like to cover it up, but for that sort of thing. So now in the center here, I'm just going to use my gloved finger and I'm just gently going to press just to get a um, nice little pattern in the middle there. Now there is a lot of paint on here. I can feel how deep that is. I do find quite often though, when the paint's quite thick, if you if you dry it slowly, and you can do that by putting a box over it um, so that it will dry slowly, um, often, you know, it being quite thick isn't a problem. If it dries too quickly, the top surface will dry and because it's, it's deep, the paint's deep, um, underneath will dry more slowly and then as that does dry, it will crack the top surface which is already dried. So just be a little bit careful there. Um, but as I say, I don't usually have too much problem. So I'm just going to use my heat embossing tool just to um, burst any bubbles and also help to bring up any cells, which I really don't need to from that point of view. Now, just gently spinning, just to get some of the um, weight out of it, as I say. I don't want to expand it too much, though, so I'm not going to spin it very fast.
Okay, so that hasn't um, it's moved off a little bit, not too much, and it hasn't misshapen it too much. I can still see um, my petals. Now I can either leave it like that, or I could draw um, the petals in with a meat skewer. And you know me by now, I do love to do a little bit of um, modification. So I will. So I'm just going to draw a line into the center. Just wherever it takes your fancy. In nature, different flowers have a different number of petals. And I don't want it to be, you know, extremely um, defined. And you can do this either before or after um, spinning out. I've chosen to do it after because I don't want them to go skewiffed. I love that word, skewiffed. I'm sure there was such a word. Still very deep in the middle there, but I, I think it will dry okay. Time will tell. Okay. So there we have it, guys. I'm just going to leave it like that now. And um, I'll now bring you down for a close-up. Okay, so here we are coming down for a close-up of this lovely flower, reverse flower, Deb. Now, the colour through the camera is nothing like the colour in real life. In real life, it's a much nicer pink than what um, I can see through there. I've got the flash on, though, so that you can pick up on some of the shimmer in here, which is just beautiful. And where I've used the um, Pouring Masters Interference Pearl Red, it's just created these beautiful cells. Well, that and the mixture of all the other paints that I've used. But um, it's just lovely. The lacing. Where I've used the um, cell activator, the black cell activator, it didn't really do a lot. Um, but it has, you know, created a contrast in, in the piece. So um, that in itself is, is good. See here, beautiful shimmer. It's just lovely. A lovely centre there. So hard to pick up, you know, what I can see in real life compared to um, to what's on the camera. So hopefully you enjoyed that one today, guys, and um, we'll give that a go yourself. And if you do, let me know how you went. I'd love to hear from you. And um, I, of course, learnt this technique from Fiona, from Fiona Art. So have a look at her channel if you haven't already um, and see what you can learn from there as well. Okay, so that's it for today. So I'll see you back here in Studio 33 in the not-too-distant future. Until then, stay safe. Bye-bye.